Friends in Christ, this Lenten season we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Let us make confession to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people, and in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life in faith may speak again to our hearts feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The psalm is spoken in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me, Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant the child of your serving girl. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. 
Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Imagine. Imagine if Jesus' last hours with his disciples were during a pandemic. Would the Last Supper have been on Zoom? Or perhaps at least just socially distanced? It doesn't look that way, certainly on da Vinci's famous Last Supper fresco, does it? Imagine. Through the ages, the Christian Church has observed Monday, Thursday, Thursday in Holy Week, each and every year. And it has, in a sense, extended then that Last Supper to the present, to the present time, each and every time it gathers around a table or altar for Holy Communion. Now, Christians certainly have differed on the understanding and even significance of Holy Communion in the life of the Christian and in the life of the church and its role in worship. Is it just something to do once in a while to remember Jesus? Or is it actually a community meal where Jesus continues to be the host and present with us as we break bread and as we share the cup? The latter, of course, is our Lutheran understanding. Jesus is present, we say in our meal of Holy Communion. Martin Luther was fond of saying Jesus was present in, with, and under the forms of bread and wine. Present. What an important word these days. What have you and I missed most in this past year? The presence of loved ones the presence of friends and family. 
presence is a very important thing. It is something treasured, and how much we realize that each time a loved one passes. Oh, memories are great, and they are treasured, but they just don't do it for us as having that person present with us. How many, even after a loved one is gone, hang on to recordings, even voicemail just to hear a loved one's voice, to feel some sense of presence of that person in our life, that presence that we so crave. Now, Jesus didn't have Zoom or recordings. Jesus had bread and wine, a meal. Jesus had companions, a community with whom to share that meal. Isn't food always so much better when shared? Every year, I so appreciate how the scripture gurus that assign texts for various days of the church year, how each and every year they put together these scriptures we have today. There is, of course, the words of institution. And there in 1 Corinthians, Paul records actually the only biographical information concerning Jesus that's in any of Paul's letters. Paul records these words of Jesus. These writings of Paul's, of course, predate even the gospel writing. And then there is John's gospel for today, John's brief nod to the Last Supper, with a focus instead on taking a towel and washing the disciples' feet. Both of these are acts of love. Both come with instructions from Jesus to be repeated. One, the sharing of the bread and wine, comes with a very specific command. Do this. Do. Don't just think about it. Don't just appreciate it or wonder about it. Do it. Do this. This. Not just any sharing of food, but a very particular menu. Gathered in a very particular community, with very specific words. Christians, it seems, have done this since the very beginning of any gatherings called Christian. And for most of the church's history, Christians were convinced one way or another, Jesus remained host and present. Then came the Reformation and various understandings developed with Lutherans remaining closer to the older traditional belief than any of the newer ones. I remember some years ago having a discussion about this with a Mennonite colleague, a Mennonite pastor. He was adamant. This was just a nice thing to do once in a while, to remember Jesus. So finally I asked him, I said, okay, so in your community, when you celebrate communion, how do your people act as they receive the elements? Does it appear? Do they seem to feel like something is happening, something important is being done and taking place? He admitted that, yes, this was so. He could see it, he said, in their body language and their facial expressions. And he described some of that, how different it was from the rest of worship. And then he said worship, in fact, was different after they received communion. Aha, said the wizened Lutheran pastor. Could this be some sign that maybe more than just simple eating and drinking was taking place? I don't know that I convinced him, but he did think about it and confess some time later that he was still sort of wondering about this. Today we commemorate this act of Jesus, this bequest of a meal to the church and the followers of Jesus. Each time we gather to receive this meal with our brothers and sisters in the faith, we can say we celebrate this bequest this meal. 
we can use that word celebrate even in a pandemic. And perhaps especially during a time when mass shootings seem to loom over us like a dark cloud. Jesus still gives us something good to break in, something to celebrate, if only in a much more subdued manner of our celebration. The celebration is that despite sheltering in place, despite social distancing, places shut down, tragedies, we are not alone. There is a presence among us, a presence who tells us each and every time we know where to encounter that presence. We know how and where that presence will encounter us. We are not alone. The God we see in Jesus is with us, even when we are unable to gather around the table of Jesus. Jesus is present. Whenever any do the humble work of loving another as Jesus did with his disciples, both in a meal and in a towel, there is Jesus. The humble work of love may be through FaceTime, it may be through Skype, Zoom, or raising our voices to be heard across the cul-de-sac. A word of greeting to a neighbor. It may be dropping off food at someone's home or a gift for a loved one. Jesus doesn't mind coming through our sometimes lowly and humble efforts. In fact, it would seem Jesus seems to prefer such. After all, in his day, At a meal, what was more common, what was more ordinary than bread and wine? This Monday, Thursday, we may not be able to gather and partake in Holy Communion together, but we all have power. The gathering presence will return. The celebration will commence once more. In the meantime, in the meantime, hunt around for a few places that could use your towel. Amen. United by the servant love of God in Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the world. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into teachers of faith. From one generation to the next, give your church a hunger for your promise and the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food and teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You redeem your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish just leadership in places of tyranny and peace in place of war. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it. Those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Jesus wash the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire this congregation's ministries of service that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Bless the ministries of deacons throughout the church. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear all, hear these in all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. 
Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all, and also with you. Together, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me, so far from these words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night. But I find no rest, yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted, and you rescued them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips, they shake their heads. Trust in the Lord, let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him if God so delights in him. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for the trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me, like a slashing and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in. A band of evildoers circles around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far away. O my help, ha hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. From the horns of wild bulls you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despair, nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them, but when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God, for dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they may be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. 